There's a YouTube show full of fun facts you need to know. Carl brings a bell and the members show to the GMP morning show. Featured guests will come and they will blow your mind. The audience will do so in kind. The little vanity mixed with some insanity On the morning show with GMP Good morning Portugal and I'd like to welcome you to another fantastic day Hey you gumpers Hola, bon dia, alegria. I must have uh, put up the mic fader. <laughs> Hola, bon dia, alegria. Monson here with the Good Morning Portugal show, a live stream and podcast. How are you this morning? Mrs. M, I know it sounds silly, but I've just realized I'm going through my second Saturn return on. I and that's why so many profound things are happen happening to me at the moment. I know you've been telling me this for ages, but just suddenly when I was out with the dogs, pondering things like, should I open a fast food outlet called Bifana Rama? and other such important and pressing matters that come in out of left field and seemingly from nowhere. Yes, second Saturn return. That explains a lot, does it not? Mrs. M here, Feel Good Astrology, morning all, she says. Deagle, I haven't seen you for ages, mate. How are you? Bondia Carl and Gumpers from a wet and warm, who doesn't like, seven degrees Belfast. T-Duck and Coach Turner in, as is that third man, third wise man of the Gumpocalypse. James is here as well with the Bondia Gumpers. Felice Quinta, Todos. Quinta, of course, uh, Thursday. Uh, it's the Expats Portugal webinar and Dream Team tonight. Join me at 7.30. We're going to be talking to Jackie, I believe, about uh, comparative cost of living, uh, Portugal, US, UK, and deep diving, not just the price uh, comparisons, but quality um, and other factors, not just the cynical matter of comparing uh, price to price, as important as that that is. In one context, uh, we're looking at uh, a broader, a three-dimensional view of a, a comparison of cost of living uh, when it comes to living in Portugal compared to notably to the US and the UK. We've got a light up Christmas in just a moment, courtesy of Aviva, 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 Aviva in Madeira this morning. Thank you, Aviva, for your pics and video. And if you would like to send some to me, if you haven't already submitted an Advent calendar um, entry our, our video advent calendar over at goodmorningportugal.com then please do so uh, the country code for whatsapp is 0035191359030 send those pickies you can send a complete video if you want to if you're a bit of a dab hand with the old video video editing stuff as andy klein is who'll be capturing the englishman the irishman and two portuguese guys go into their own craft beer brewery at the weekend uh, feel free to send me uh, a fully produced video but if you've just got pictures and video thank you to Pam who just sent some in this morning uh, send them to me and I'll stitch them together in the way that you'll see in just a moment and especially if you're looking at my video editing skills and thinking god blimey um, they're rubbish you could get, do much better than that on Fiverr feel free go ahead uh, do so I, I do it to the best of my ability uh, making videos and i would like to think especially at this time of year it's a thought that counts so we'll have a look at aviva's video in a moment uh, this is how it's looking so far uh, over at uh, goodmorningportugal.com uh, we have opened seven well it's the 7th of december so we have opened seven windows so far kicking us off were john and pam of course as you can see on your screen now if you're watching on video and not the podcast uh, if you are listening on the podcast i'll tell you top left john and pam de nort with their beautiful video and uh, stills from vigo james holly james um friend of slug uh eddie sarah on the second on the third we had a little uh, montage of beautiful scenes from the martin Yarl chain who are offering uh, Christmas and New Year specials. Familia by Randy and Agada on the 4th. 5th was uh, Miguel Carvalho and his, uh, it wasn't so much a light up Christmas video in the strictest sense, literal sense, but our imaginations and uh, we were inspired. We were lit up in that way by Miguel who told us about uh, traditional Portuguese Christmas going way back, back beyond Bolare. Oh, there's, a, there's Pete in the bottom right-hand corner of that video swigging on a, 
glass or something or other. No doubt some fizz or uh, Modena there. And I noticed a typo. I'll go back and sort that out later. Yesterday, the Roonies on the Silver Coast. And this morning, a uh, premiered at 8 o'clock this morning. It was uh, Aviva in Madeira. So thank you very much to everybody who sent videos in so far. Keep them coming. 913-590-303. It's my pleasure to share them on the screen, on the website, and light up Christmas 2023. I was looking forward to 2024 writing my Portugal resident piece yesterday, which I hope the editor likes. And it was great to uh, bring together uh, the 50th anniversary of the Carnation Revolution, the election that's coming up, and of course, Portugal, the football team. Bit of commentary from Frank. Uh, Uncle Frank and his uh, punditry about the uh, the play of, of uh, Euro 24 uh, next year. I think it's in, is it in Germany next year or is it host nation Italy? I'm not sure, but uh, wherever it's happening, um, I, Frank was actually saying that uh, Portugal stand quite a good chance of winning that. And it'll be Cristiano Ronaldo, CR7's swan song, his final tournament uh, in all, in all uh, probability. So if they do win... Um, and they'll be playing their hearts out, won't they? Because Christian, it's Cristiano's last tournament of that kind. Should be very exciting. And that will put all the politics in the shade, believe me, um, it should that happen next year. So that's my next article uh, due to be released, uh, I think, next week. Um, and uh, keep your eyes out uh, for my love letter to Portugal that's coming out. Maybe published online already, but it will be in the paper tomorrow, the Portugal resident. And if you're a GMP VIP, we can organize a discounted subscription rate for you as well. If you want the paper delivered to your door, if you would like to do that um, old school thing of receiving the newspaper in the post, putting a kettle on, having a cup of tea and having a look through the paper. And if other people make noise, you can just look over the top of the paper. Like, do you mind? I'm having a moment here reading the newspaper. Um, I'm quite enjoying that from time to time, going and getting a, smelling the newsprint, you know, going and getting a, a hard copy from the news agent. And I can hear in San Martino de Porto and uh, opening it up and having a look, uh, which you just don't get with uh, the digital versions, um, as convenient as they are. Uh, Born the Alegria then from T-Duck at um, around 8 o'clock this morning. How are you this morning, T-Duck? Um, good morning, Coach. Before Coach even got in with his God Squad tip of the day, which we'll do in just a moment. Um, do you know how to deep fry a salad is the uh, more <laughs> nutritional <laughs> advice Q&A this morning. Um, I wonder if the coach, I imagine Coach Turner will suggest air frying your salad, as is the way um, at the moment, the Vogue uh, in the kitchen. Uh, Portuguese saying then from T-Duck, Agua mol, pedra dura, tanto bata, até, até que fura. And that rhymes as well, doesn't it? Soft water, hard stone, keeps beating until it gets through. Ah, okay. So like, yeah, um, it's scissors, paper, rock, isn't it? Rock, paper, scissors there. Um, water, soft as it, as it is, eventually overcomes the hardness of water. Who doesn't like a bit of that first thing in the morning? Thank you very much. And uh, I'm going to deviate a little. Um, I'm going to, of course, read your deep thought. Uh, the uh, very popular Anne Landers this week. Thank you very much uh, for these, uh, T-Duck. And I saw something on uh, Facebook which um, I squirreled away for this purpose this morning as well. I'd like to uh, take us to, uh, to over to the words of uh, Khalil Gibran as well this morning uh, when, we, when, when we're on the matter of deep thoughts. The one from Anne Landers then this morning, courtesy of T-Duck, is it is a mark of a superior mind. Hold on a minute. Let's come back to uh, who, who, who Anne Landers was, first of all, and then come back to that deep thought. In a 1996 column, Landers informed her residents to avoid throwing rice at weddings, lest birds eat it and explode. Such advice was erroneous, as milled rice is not harmful to the birds, she later recanted. Although I'm, I'm, I'm sure it was meant well, and people would have really got behind that, wouldn't they? Um, I, I was thinking, you know, because it hurts the bride and groom to have a little bit of basmati in the eye. Uh, but, um, yep, uh, that makes sense, doesn't it? The bird eats the rice goes to drink some water, <laughs> all those grains of rice expand in the gut. But no, I think the intestinal transit time of a bird is far quicker uh, than it is for us um, humans that might feel a swollen rice in the belly, um, if we're lucky. Um, it is a mark of superior mind, of a superior mind, to be able to disagree without being disagreeable. Oh, yes, very good life advice there, uh, Anne Landers, this morning. Okay, let me, um, while we're on the, on the matter of thinking deeply then, uh, let me go over to uh, something I've put to one side over at, on Facebook, uh, which came up on my screen. And um, in the, with my blurry eyesight this morning, I thought it was something 
I thought, excuse me, I thought it was something about Prince. I thought this was a picture of Prince um, on the screen. It's it's, it's um it's a, a one of those uh, bro, bromide photos. It's not especially clear, but it had, it had the energy and resonance of Prince. But it's not a, a different, a literary Prince, um, Khalil Gibran. Um, so let me bring it onto the screen uh, for you now and tell you a little bit about him. He was called filthy because his skin was dark, unintelligible because he could barely speak English. When he arrived in this country, he was placed in a special class for immigrants. But a few of his teachers saw something in the way he expressed himself through his drawings, through his view of the world, and he would soon master his new language, Khalil Gibran. And um, what really caught my eye, I, I, actually, when I was going through an earlier Saturn return, um, the, Khalil Gibran was very important to me. And, and I think you'll know his words um, from various sources of, of inspiration he is called upon. Um, published in 108 languages, Khalil Gibran, um, most best known for his book, The Prophet, published in 1923. It would, sell, it would go on to sell tens of millions of copies, making him the third best-selling poet of all time behind Shakespeare and Lao Tzu. Um, published in 108 languages around the world, passages from The Prophet are quoted at weddings, in political speeches and at funerals, inspiring influential figures such as John F. Kennedy, Indira Gandhi, Elvis Presley, John Lennon and David Bowie. Now, um, he said uh, of his mother, he would write the most beautiful word on the lips of mankind is the word mother. Isn't that lovely? Uh, and I'd like to uh, share that, especially for Mrs. M who had a significant mother moment that you might have seen if you're a friend of hers on Facebook just recently. So, yeah, isn't that lovely? And the most beautiful call is the call of my mother. It is a word full of hope and love, a sweet and kind word coming from the depths of the heart. The mother is everything. Now, whether that's a specific individual or generally an archetypal, I'm sure we can uh, relate to that, can't we? She is the source of love, mercy, sympathy, and forgiveness. Oh, I'm making myself well up here. Um, so let's let's move to the prophet. Um, and he would write in the prophet, let there be spaces in your togetherness. And I think this is what comes up from time to time uh, when it's read and shared at, at weddings and betrothals and that sort of thing. And he also says something about immigrants, which I'll conclude on today. But on, on relationships, let there be spaces in your togetherness and let the winds of the heavens dance between you. Love one another, but make not a bond of love. Let it rather be a moving sea between the shores of your souls. Fill each other's cup, but drink not from one cup. Give one another of your bread, but eat not from the same loaf. Sing and dance together and be joyous, but let each one of you be alone, even as the strings of a lute are alone, though they quiver with the same music. Give your hearts, but not into each other's keeping, for only the hand of life can contain your hearts. And stand together, yet not too near together, for the pillars of the temple stand apart, and the oak tree and the cypress tree grow not in each other's shadow. Um, very beautiful. And I'm so delighted to be reminded of uh, Khalil Gibran this morning and bringing it back to us here in Portugal, us expats, us immigrants, us foreigners. In a poem to new immigrants, this would be over in the United States, he would write, I believe you can say to the founders of this great nation, here I am, a youth, a young tree whose roots were plucked from the hills of Lebanon. Yet I am deeply rooted here and I would be fruitful. Isn't that lovely? So um, I think that's a reference there. Can you see why I thought that was Prince? <laughs> when I, when I um, share with you the picture on the screen there, at a quick glance, very early this morning. Yeah, very nice. So you can be, um, you can be plucked from your homeland and still be rooted in the new place. And perhaps the further those roots go down, the more intertwined they are with the beauty uh, from where you came with the beauty uh, of what you experience now. So um, just uh, adding a little bit to the deep thought of the day this morning, thanks to you, T-Duck, for your Anne Landers contribution and um, a little bit of Khalil Gibran there for you. Mrs. M enjoyed that, look. And mmm, bread. <laughs> T-Duck as well. Morning, Antonio. Good to see you here. Let me straighten my spine. Uh, not especially because you're here, Antonio. I'm just aware that with this, uh, two Antonios. Have we got Antonio F and Antonio Barbosa? Good morning to you. A bit of Tony time. The man in the Mino is here as well. Morning greetings from a beautiful and wet Mino this morning. Happy Thursday from said man in the Mino. 
I'm just going to uh, draw back a little bit with my uh, fo <laughs> with my Zoom uh, here this morning and get uh, a little bit cosier on the screen with you, if I may, if you don't mind. Oh, Aviva is here as well. Good to see you. And uh, thank you again for your uh, pictures and your video. And I hope you enjoyed seeing your, your, your images on the homepage and on our YouTube channel. Coach Turner in then at... Um, Around uh, just after eight o'clock this morning, bon dia todos. More rain due here in Blighty. Rainy and, and misly and drizzly here when I was out walking the dogs this morning. Yes, it's really starting to rain now here in Portugal too, Coach Turner. Not so much a green and pleasant land, more a swamp. Enjoy your day, everyone. Uh, incidentally, I'll be playing uh, Aviva's Christmas video in just a moment. Day seven, video seven. Thunder duck, not deep frying salad, but have you heard about the Scottish delicacy of the deep fried Mars bar? Uh, God Squad tip of the day, number four then, and the list of exercises to avoid. This We're loving this, exercises to avoid. It almost feels like we're doing something, doesn't it? But don't injure yourself with the neck roll. Um, so you don't want to be Rick rolled. You don't want to be neck rolled. This is where you roll your head all the way around. You know, at any age, that looks quite dangerous, doesn't it? And, and extreme. You know, I think it's good to mindfully feel the movement of your neck. But when people do all that crunching and, you know, contorting, that's it's not very respectful of the body, is it? Um, people often do this to try and loosen the muscles in their neck. The problem is that the neck joints aren't too happy to move in such a complex way. And it can lead to spinal issues. Yeah. Um, be careful, be respectful of your body rather than pushing it so uh, vigorously um, and harshly in that way. Thank you for that reminder, uh, Coach Turner. Mrs. M was in at around uh, just before showtime this morning. And Baddy's here as well. Good morning to you, Baddy. Bon dia, folks. And by Randy. Hola, Malta. Damn morning. So we'll be joining live. Excellent stuff. The rain's kept him in. And uh, Andy, have you already sent your preview for the weekend? I think I did see that flash past on um on the uh oh no that's not for tomorrow that is oh brilliant excellent i've got an extra few images from um from andy and paul who've been out and about and you're on our old stomping ground mrs m andy and paul were at uh oh i've got to show you this picture uh, this will bring back a few a few memories uh for uh, mrs m here and uh, oh motorbiking down that lovely avenue of plane trees in korea i must get back there and see that um, sometime soon, and we'll give you a shout when, when we're in the area. by Randy, but absolutely love um, that uh, part of the world. Where's that picture gone now? Where did I save that to? Oh yeah, if um, if you've been to Korea, you will, as in Korea in uh, Portugal, not North or South Korea. There's the um, the, the entrance way to the uh, Teramash Hotel with its lovely. It's a little pleasure ground in there. One of the biggest lakes in Portugal, said to be one of the biggest uh, man-made lakes in uh, Europe. I, it's not that big, but it's very pleasant and lovely to walk around. And that's the water feature on the roundabout that was built just in the last uh, three years or so. So thank you very much for that, Andy. I hope you had a great time. It looks a bit, your nose looks a bit red in some of the pictures. It looks like it was a little bit of a, a, a nippy day there uh, in uh, central Portugal in the Bairada district. Thank you very much uh, for your contributions yesterday. We'll get those, we'll get those spun in at some point. And looking forward to your weekend preview as well, of course, uh, on the Gumper map. Been a lurker last few weeks. Big flare-up in the asthma. Third this year. Oh, sorry to hear that, Deagle. And, and yes, a bit of an emergency in the um, home of Ian and Fabrizio, who would be joining us this morning at nine, but can't this morning. I do have a video of theirs from Japan, where they've recently been. But uh, um, take it easy, you two. I hope everything turns out okay with the uh, em emergency that you had uh, this morning. And uh, we'll have uh, Ali with us to preview the December um, edition of Snapshot as well. And she'll be joining us at around quarter past, uh, which is perfect. So, yeah, take it easy, Ian and Fabrizio. I hope everything's going well for you in Lisbon. Sorry not to be seeing you this morning. Um, quite a slow Christmas as I start getting going again for Deagle as well. Managed to avoid hospital with that asthma attack. And I know you love Christmas, Deagle. Looking forward to, so no, not to put any stress on you, but always lovely to feature your Christmas decorations. And a walk around your house once all those decorations are up. It would be lovely to get that video on our video advent calendar at goodmorningportugal.com on the homepage. Lighting up Christmas 2023. Bond here from a wet PDL this morning. That'll be Pont Lima, of course. Morning, John. And Bond here from VRSA, from Anna, off for training uh, to my choir soon. Two Christmas concerts to prepare for, one together with the Portuguese choir, the Coro Jubilato Deo, and the other at uh, Lucia in Tavira. Let us know when they're happening, if you will. Oh, more music to come from Branny as well. So we might spin Branny in 
a little bit earlier than scheduled this morning. But we've got another Branny video for you. What a legend he is. And it's uh, where it said in the video to be continued yesterday when it was filmed inside the office environment. We've got more footage from the office in his uh, next song that we'll play for you that he's been very kind uh, in, in sharing with us and allowing us to play Nine Lives coming up from um, uh, Branny in a little while. Uh, ducks eat greens. Bread is not good for them. So feed them lettuce and leafy greens if you're going to feed them at all, please, um, says James. I buy hen scratch to feed the ducks and swans. It consists of corn, grain and seeds. They love it. They see him coming. They really do. I've seen it for me with my own eyes in Caldas de Renye, uh, Dom Carlos Park. Uh, they see Thunder Duck coming and they <laughs> make their way towards him. If they haven't already been fed and they're just like, Meh. Uh, I'm not coming over. My belly is full. Thank you very much. But when they're hungry, they're loving a bit of, um, they're loving themselves some of that hen scratch from Tito. Uh, much preparations are here, hereabouts for Christmas lighting and in the marketplace tomorrow evening in Ponte Lima. All are welcome to visit. I hear the village becomes practically Dickensonian. And uh, will they be uh, featuring the Dickens cider, the famous uh, cider that um, puts a smile on the faces of many drinkers? Um, so, yeah, a positively Dickensonian, maybe a bit of Dickens cider uh, up there in Pont Lima. And um, Antonio, oh, it was Bobby O'Reilly, I think, who introduced me to the legendary brew of the Dickens cider. Um, and uh, yes, talking of which, of course, we will be tasting craft beer, me and him, uh, the Englishman and the Irishman at uh, Epicura on Saturday afternoon in Coimbra. I hope you can join us. Morning greetings from a beautiful and wet Mino, of course, from Tony up there in the Mino. And uh, Antonio F. Bon dia, Luisa. Feel good astrology. And Colleen is here. Yes, we were going to be talking to um, Ian and uh, Fab and Ian about uh, Stubal, which I believe you're enjoying, Colleen. Uh, I bought a handful of books with me. And although I haven't read it for decades, The Prophet was one I grabbed and packed. And now I will reread it, Obrigado. How lovely to make that connection. I haven't looked at that book. I, I did have it. Um, it was, it was a, a clutch of books that were very dear to me. Um, ridding yourself of unhappiness was the other one from very long. The Art of Loving, Eric Fromm, um, The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. I think I've got a Bhagavad Gita somewhere. Um, Being Oneself, a book from the School of Meditation. Isn't it amazing how some books you just hold on to um, over time? And the books I really love in my collection are the ones that have been given to me by the authors. And I'm very lucky to have been given a few books by authors as well. Oh, wow. Well, happy times. What's going on here? Um, I, I miss. I might. I might have missed a bit of information there. Uh, hey, Antonio, and uh, flashlight's fine, but apparently my neck doesn't like it. What? Oh, here we go. I missed a bit of context. Thank you. Why no more batteries in the flashlight? Uh, I've, I've definitely missed something here, me. So no more flash dancing for me. That. Oh, I see. Okay, with the eighties neck twist. Have you stopped spinning on your head now, James? Um, were you in an 80s break dancing crew as well as all the other amazing things you've done? Okay, let's um let's light up Christmas then with a Viva's video first, and we'll be playing Branny's Nine Lives as well. Let's go to Madeira. Thanks again to a Viva Ocean Dweller. And uh, this these are, are her images that graced the homepage of Good Morning Portugal this morning on our advent calendar, day seven. <laughs> No, that is not Madeira. That's Japan, where we'll be going next. Here's a Madeira, everybody. The lights are twinkling everywhere that we go. And we're all out dancing in the street. The lights are twinkling Oh, thanks, Aviva. That's really lovely. And yeah, we haven't got uh, Ian and Fabrizio with us this morning, but we got a video uh, from them of uh, Japan where they visited recently, which is really lovely. And a weather report from uh, James. I guess I forgot to mention that it's wet and beautiful. Wet and beautiful uh, here in Eddie Cider today. He's not bothered about a bit of rain and, and the slug loves it as well too. Okay, so let's go to Japan now. 
and um, see some uh, some of the footage that was uh, uh, gathered together, uh, especially for us, I believe, uh, by Fabrizio and Ian. The, uh, Japan's fascinating, isn't it? As you'll see from just over a minute of video uh, that they very kindly, uh, very kindly, um, and uh, that we gratefully received here uh, from their holiday, their recent holiday. Here. <laughs> Arigato. That is so beautiful, isn't it? Uh, Mrs. M loving the colours, the beautiful dual colours lining up the street in Madeira. I'm sure Mrs. M, you'd have loved the colours and, and images from Japan there as well with Mount Fuji in the distance. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much, uh, Fabrizio and Ian. Oh, wow, Japan. Should we go one day? I've never, ever said that to you, but maybe we should go to Japan one day. I know you want to go to the Far East. We can make it part of, the, of our big Far Eastern tour uh, one day. Pam's in as well, Bondia. Thank you for your images and pictures, Pam. And uh, we've got Waking Up by Sam Harris, that should be, Sam. Is that a book that you're particularly keen on? Okay, uh, an outbreak of the Good Morning Portugal book club. I know um, Gilda wanted to do a um, Expats Portugal book club. Too busy to do it, I think, but uh, we might be able to help with that, mightn't we? Um, is that a recommendation there, um, Ocean Dweller Aviva, Waking Up by Sam Harris? He's got an interesting voice, uh, Sam Harris, hasn't he? Um, and uh, one of those long-form podcasters of the last few years, along with Jordan Peterson and, and um, Rubin. What's it? Not Rick Rubin, another one. Um, all those guys who did who started the, the long podcast um, movement, if you like. Who <laughs> doesn't like a long podcast movement? <laughs> <laughs> um, the long form podcast is, is what I meant, and um, they got themselves banned off various platforms, didn't they? But yeah, heavyweight thinker Sam Harris, and perhaps that's a book recommendation. Waking up um, by him. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Uh, we've got uh, Ali joining us at around quarter past nine this morning, a little bit earlier because uh, Fabrizio and Ian uh, can't join us. While uh, we're looking at the homepage of Good Morning Portugal for our Advent videos. I'd also like to uh, draw your attention to our hashtag PT24. Um, if you know anyone who's moving to Portugal uh, or thinking about it or doing it next year or in the next couple of years, uh, you might want to point them in the, the direction of uh, hashtag PT24, um, our, our, our mini campaign to help people move to Portugal um, with um, the help of many of the professionals. Uh, that are part of our Gumpa community here. There's a lot of blurred lines, aren't there? I mean, so many of the people in our community are friends, um, as well as co-hosts and professionals helping you move to Portugal. And I mean, blurred lines in a good way. And you can see some of the people from our community, because I'm also gathering their thoughts about 2024 and the new year. I've got a quote from Bruce Hawker from the Portugal resident, Bobby and Anna, uh, Savvy Kana, were talking about it last Friday. Uh, so some quotes from them and clips from the shows and um, Tony as well. And his interesting, his very interesting uh, view of the elections and uh, thoughts for next year as well. And a step-by-step, -step, uh, I, I ran this past Mrs. M the other day, didn't I, that our, our, our four basic steps for moving to Portugal, commit, connect, consult, and convert uh, were the, 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 the best four first steps I could think of. And there's the extras, of course, if you want extra help. Or, or you need um, a, the nuance of starting a business, uh, for example. So that's all over there. You just one click away after you've landed at goodmorningportugal.com. Uh, you can click on um, uh, the hashtag uh, PT24 campaign. You can, it's a quick way of clicking through to our podcast as well. Thousands of um, episodes of the Good Morning Portugal. I must count them up at some point and look at how many uh, we've actually 
done. If, I mean, there's been a million views of the videos over on Expats Portugal, so we're doing pretty well um, with our uh, reach around the world and our efforts to help people become interested and passionate about Portugal, even move here and uh, supporting people once they live here. Our Discover Portugal weekend in Coimbra, drop-down menu with the plans so far on there. Portugal Club, if you want extra help, and some of our sub-projects of the Portugal Club also on the homepage at goodmorningportugal.com. Clicks through to some of the uh, helpers there that I've previously mentioned. The events map, of course, that uh, by Randy updates. Uh, a link to click through to uh, getting your currency through Spartan FX. And my Bay blog that I've... Um, um, not, that's nothing, it's, it sounds like love advice, the Bay blog, doesn't it? Because I think Bay is a word for... It's, it could be English or it could be American. But I think in the American American street slang, Bay is your, 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 your partner, right? Um, it's not that kind of Bay. Although it is our beloved San Martino de Porto, the Bay blog over there. And meet the team, which I updated a little bit yesterday, all the wonderful people. And I'm putting more and more of the links through to their websites and how you can get in touch with them. But look at that wonderful team there um, that are part of the, that make this experience what it is basically not possible without um, some wonderful collaboration and community here at Good Morning Portugal. And that includes you if you're listening right now. So thank you for uh, indulging me there for a moment. Not that you had much choice in the matter, but a little bit of a tour around the website as it is at the moment. Um, I did a tour of Asia a long time ago, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, Hong Kong, Korea, and Japan. And I got paid to do it. I was in the Navy. You were in the Navy as well. I didn't, I don't recall that, James. That's incredible. Wow. Um, it's a good one uh, before he became so political. That is what happened with that long form podcasting thing, isn't it? Waking up. So more of a, the spiritual side, perhaps, and philosophical side of Sam Harris and not so much the political side there. Um, very good. Thank you for that. Any other book recommendations gratefully received? Let's go from books to music now and hear another tune from Branny. Um, who, who has a gig coming up? Were we able to see what when he was playing uh, from this? Uh, last, oh, that was the opening meme this morning. One night, a Viking named Rudolph the Red was looking out of the window when he said, it's going to rain. Because that's, of course, how he would speak a Viking named Rudolph the Red. It's going to rain. His wife asked, how do you know? Because Rudolph the Red knows rain, dear. Ow. Um, Branny uh, is playing, I think, tonight, uh, 7th of December. And I'm thinking that because <laughs> the screenshot's got the volume in there. Um, that happens, doesn't it? Sometimes my best screenshots are ruined by other things on the screen there. Because, yeah, you're pressing the volume button to take the picture on you and grab the screenshot. Sometimes that happens. I'm thinking, though, that's in Lorinha tonight, 7 o'clock. Uh, sorry, the 7th of December at 9 o'clock. Uh, 9 o'clock. That's very, very early to be a rock and roller on stage here in Portugal. Uh, the Let Love Grow tour is happening, uh, part of it certainly, in Lorinha this evening. So let's hear some of his music now. Uh, this is Nine Lives. We've heard Let Love Grow. Uh, we've also heard Get You Off My Mind, which took place in a, an office environment yesterday. Here's Nine Lives, where we return to that. Um, is it called, um, what is what is the, um, a spit, is it? The bit that's a concrete structure that sticks out into the sea to break up the tidal movements a little bit, I think. Who doesn't like a tidal movement first thing in the morning? I know I like a bit of Branny first thing in the morning. Bran and Bran.
I'm so glad that's continuing. And I want a job <laughs> at the office as well. Has anyone ever has anyone worked at an office like that? It looks like a great place to work, doesn't it? Brownie and his colleagues there. And uh, the moment uh, when the, when people th- take the pin out of their hair, uh, you know, somebody the the rather the, the, the girl who doesn't say a lot, maybe, and and then you know, next thing you know, she's taking a pin out of her hair. It's like a, a pin coming out of a grenade, isn't it? And chucks her glasses down and gets up on the desk, chucks her jacket off and starts dancing on the desk. We need to see more of that in workplaces throughout the world, please. Thank you for the inspiration on that, Branny. And may I urge you as well at this point to uh, subscribe to his YouTube channel. Um, I'm copying the link for, for that. Uh, I think there's nothing greater, I mean, apart from being um, hugely wealthy from your creativity, um, what what might come a very close second, if not a first actually sometimes, um, is some recognition. So if you could subscribe to a Branny's YouTube channel, or maybe even send him a message saying you've see, seen his music on the Good Morning Portugal show and we've enjoyed rocking out. Um, that would uh, blow the cobwebs off you on a Thursday morning. Bit of hard rock, love it. It's a great sound, isn't it? <laughs> Let's go through all the comments that have come in about um, Branny and his music. Uh, that looks like the groin, ooh, uh, at Barra. I think it's um, Lorigna. Uh, uh, yeah, I can, I can understand why you thought that. Um, but I think it's Lorigna, his hometown there, and a simple rock Hoo-ah! from uh, the, the slug of uh, James, friend of slug, um, as well. And yeah, Brag Andy saying maybe not. Uh, I think it is Lorigna, uh, where he's based and, and where he loves uh, that part of the world. He's not from Portugal, he's Croatian, I believe, uh, originally, but came here, fell in love with a Portuguese girl and loves this country and the inspiration he gets from being here in Portugal. <laughs> I, I like it too. Um, proper old school, says Coach Turner, enjoying that, uh, rocking out. That all adds to the um, calorific burn, doesn't it? Rocking out around the kitchen to a bit of brandy. Uh, real acoustic, electric um, uh, instruments. Now that, that. Uh, far out, man, says t I'm rocked. I'm awake now. Great feedback. That's real music, uh, says Slow and Low is how Slug rides. Thank you, War. That's James, of course. And, yeah, blowing the cobwebs off. And <laughs> blowing the cobwebs off with an old fart. <laughs> what a great combination of comments there. You never know that's going to happen. That's just so poetic and beautiful. <laughs> blowing the cobwebs off. <laughs> With an old fart. Uh, brilliant. And cheers, t yeah, for subscribing. It means a lot to people who are creative, I think, to um, to, to show your appreciation. And if you can, send him a message. Uh, also, um, yeah, going to his, um, his, his press kit, if I can share that with you for a moment. Uh, Branny's press kit. There's a great, I mean, we've, we've been doing some deep thinking this morning, haven't we, and inspirational thinking. And uh, here on his uh, homepage, when we talked to him, was it on Tuesday of this week? Um, there's a great quote from somebody I'm, I'm not familiar with actually here in Portugal, but the message of the EP generally, and you can see there, um, we've heard Get You Off My Mind, we've just heard Nine Lives, we've heard Let Love Grow. Um, I don't know if there are videos for Bye Bye and Up in the Clouds. If there are, we'll be playing them uh, tomorrow and um, into next week. Uh, we've also got a music video to come from our mate Ben Apple, uh, a.k.a. Ben, Benjamin Stubbs, who's uh, recorded a Christmas tune as well. So that'll be on our homepage. Uh, back to Branding then. Let Love Grow is the EP. The message of the EP is simple. When we make decisions based on love, we attract more love into our lives. Look for what makes you happy, what gives you li- your life meaning, and don't be afraid to take risks, is his advice. As the great Antonio Variasoy says, change your life if you're not satisfied. Absolutely. Oh, a little flicker of a power outage there. Um, so just a little bit of a heads up on what might happen any minute here. Um, and that's branny.pt. Um, if you'd like to find out more about him there. And look at this. The launch party, November the 15th, uh, Tokyo. Oh, the, uh, probably a bar called Tokyo rather than actual simultaneously in Tokyo and Lisbon. Brani and Joana Marques came together on stage to make Brani's debut in Portuguese society. He intends to present you with his very first EP, the Let Love Grow EP. She intending to ridicule this moment, and it was beautiful. An audience full of energy, a concert that gave many spectators goosebumps and a very pleasant performance by Joana as well. I think maybe we need to have a look at her music too. Joanna Marques there, brilliant. And uh, there he is, yeah, Browning, musician who sees music as a form of self-expression and a means to tell stories and convey a message. He's certainly doing that. Born in Croatia, has, has uh, uh, grown up in several countries, and it was the Idolos, the um, Portuguese idols, pop idols program here uh, that brought him over to this country. 
But it was the good food, the fantastic people, and the feeling of a free and authentic society that made him stay. He's a gumper, isn't he? Through and through uh, expressing sentiments like that. So please get behind the uh, Let Love Grow EP if you can. And a thank you to Branny for being so giving and sharing of your music with us. Uh, Ali's just getting ready. And another deep thought. A lot of deep thinking this morning. Um, if you can change your mind, you can change your life, said William James. Owen's in with us as well. Bon dia. All good morning to you, Owen. Get back to you later, mate. I, I need to put a book cover together as well for my uh, Come Back to Life book too. So I'll do, well, I'll do both of ours. Uh, maybe we'll have a chat later on today about that. I want to get mine up online and uh, going out through Amazon as well. Uh, exactly like you've done. You've inspired me there. And uh, change your mind, change your life. Uh, enjoying the Branny inspired vibes this morning. Excellent stuff. Um, Ali, could you give me a thumbs up if you're ready? I know we've dragged you to the screen far earlier than you're used to. Excellent. So thumbs up from uh, James there and uh, thumbs up from Ali as well. So nice big round of applause. <laughs> Hola, bon dia, tudo bem? Bom dia, tudo bem, contigo? I'm mean, like to say contigo to you. I think I know you well enough. <laughs> oh, definitely, yeah. No, I didn't think twice. I, I would have been a little bit shocked if you said consigo, actually. <laughs> so do so most of my neighbours, so don't worry. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is the double take. Is that right? <laughs> and it's, I mean, you, it's like the red wire or the green wire, isn't it? From a, from a, <laughs> from a you know, a UXB movie thriller <laughs> moment. Which one is it? Continue. Oh, no. I'm going to get the wrong one. I know I am. <laughs> Social explosion follows soon after. Yeah, and I guess it's one of those things that's learned through experience often, isn't it? And, yeah. and also, you're never going to get it right for the rest of your life here, are you? Sometimes it's going to go wrong. And it provides it can provide the basis of a little bit more conversation and tuition, I think. Yes, and usually a lot of giggling on their half. So it oh, was yes. something. Oh, yes. And it's definitely the Portuguese laughing with us, not at us. <laughs> Or a little bit of both. Maybe a little bit of both. Mind you, I always giggle when somebody says, I will constipada. I was, when I'm laughing. Laughing. <laughs> I was laughing about that yesterday, Ali. The cafe <laughs> constipado. Yes, I was yes. well, that'll get you moving. Yep, no, no, that's not what it means. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, oh, you too as well. Brilliant. Okay, cafe constipado. Or having, yeah, we should explain, shouldn't we? Constipado uh, here in Portugal means congestion of the upper part of the body not downstairs um other other treatments are available for the for the other for what we believe well, that's that's obstipado isn't it which always no, makes no. you really well because it's obstinate <laughs> well you learn something every day here on the good morning yeah. portugal show so constipado obstipado the distinctions there of congestion in respective parts of the body yes. and i'm sure there's a brilliant folk cure um, a bear owl would be certainly one of the suggestions for whether it's constipado or obstipado. What other what other folk folk cures do you think there are for these respective conditions? Or should we I move on? Especially living in Algezor, you probably don't want to know. <laughs> from, there'll be a I course do now. for it. <laughs> I do know. I do. Why 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 would it be particularly uh, poignant in Algezor? Oh, we we just have the we have this wonderful network of of fabulous alternative people who live around here who love oh. running. Interesting yes. courses, shall we say? Uh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cacao powder, that's a, that's a given for most of it. Yes, uh, the, some of them are wonderful, but don't get me wrong, but some of them, the way they advertise, just it just makes me giggle. It's, I can uh, believe it. It's, it's yeah. not, nothing but giggles and laughs down there in the Algarve, isn't it? Or in, <laughs> around Algiers. I know exactly what you mean. So possibly for the obstipada, it could be a bit of colonic irrigation um, with, a, with a cacao ceremony straight after. Yeah, and probably some healing crystals. <laughs> Yeah. Careful where you put those healing crystals. <laughs> exactly. I, we shouldn't we, be allowed to chat together, should we? It gets rude no, very quickly. Only a it? few minutes in this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Already the, the, the obstipado talk. Well, great <laughs> to have you here. How's life in the Algarve at the moment? A bit, a little bit damp, I suspect. Yeah, it's uh, it's not great for me, I must admit, because my rheumatoid arthritis really doesn't like oh, yeah, the, the humidada. The the damp yeah. weather's the worst for me, so I'm struggling yeah. a little bit, but keeping going. Right. But, uh, okay. <laughs> well, we're going to find out the best healing crystal for that this morning, Mrs. M. I'm sure if she's still listening, if she's not making me a nice creamy coffee, we'll have a suggestion for uh, what might work for the, for the <laughs> rheumatoid arthritis. I'm sure there are. I mean, I guess when the pain kicks in, you'll try anything, right? Well, I, I've been really, I mean, it's been five years now and I've stuck religiously to the autoimmune diet um, really strictly. Yeah. Um, we just went out for a salad about three weeks ago to a, a restaurant. I'm very careful. I tell them exactly, you know, I literally go, can I have just these ingredients? No sauce. I can do it all in Portuguese. 
Um, and they just came back. They drizzled what I thought was just like a vinegar dressing over it. So I'm like, <laughs> what'd you do? I'd already sent it back once because they'd left things like rice underneath. And I'm like, I can't eat rice. Send it back. Yeah. Um, so you stick a bit. It's really difficult because you don't like to make that much fuss. No, um, I understand that. I'm okay I... with vinegar. Vinegar's fine. Um, yeah. If the, I didn't think if there's one thing in the vinegar that I can't eat, like a pimenta or a, a pepper or something, um, and it just thump, set me off. Uh, the next day oh, I was no. struggling, and it it's a it's a really difficult one. So, but I'm actually I'm trying to actually kind of I'll just all like um, I've started doing Bowen therapy. I found a really oh good Bowen's um, great. I've got to say I've it had Bowen is, yeah, yeah I've, really I've really had good. about three sessions, and and she literally. I don't know if people know, Bowen's kind of weird because it's just tiny little movements. She does something called Emmet as well, which is another Australian therapy. They go together well. Um, but she did these tiny little, literally touch movements. And then yeah. there's kind of weight and a pause. Um, and literally said, my left knee, which I've always struggled with since my RA kicked in, has never been straight. It's always swollen and it's and it kind of leans in the actual knee. You yeah. literally see the, the angle of it. And she did well, these few things and she was, let's straighten your knee. And I literally felt my knee click and move. And it was just yeah. this weird thing of straightening back up again. So well, it's hard to it's it is hard to get excuse me. <coughs> it's hard to get your head round. Oh, I think I need a pair. I think I need, I need I need a pair out. Um yeah, because it, the movements are so subtle. And mm. as much as I take the mickey out of complementary therapists, you know, I have, I've owned a natural health center. Uh, mm. I have been a massage therapist. I've done Reiki training. You know, a lot of the, I, the reason I, I feel I'm able to take the mickey is because I've, I've been immersed in that world myself. Mm. And when it comes to something like Bowen and, and, and crystals, it's like it, it, you can't get your head, your rational head around it, can you? It's not, it shouldn't work or it's hard to understand how it works. And it, and it does well from from time like everything. Sometimes it works, and yeah. it's especially mysterious uh, when it comes to something like Bowen. And of of course, if you're from the UK, you're thinking, did Jim Bowen originate? The... Oh, oh no! <laughs> we, should be, we should be like acupuncture, wouldn't it? It could be a, it could <laughs> throwing be a... darts. <laughs> right, stay no. still, stay still. It's time for some Jim Bowen therapy. <laughs> Travel twenty. Let's have a look at what we could have won. <laughs> Oh, yeah. no. Nothing to do with Jim Bowen. Um, yeah. <laughs> let's take your time. Hurry up. That was Jim Bowen, wasn't it? Um, I, I, no, it, an incredibly subtle and powerful. Yeah. And my experience of it, as I recall, is back in Devon, uh, in Newton Abbott, which is where my healing center was, Ali. Mm. And um, I, one of the therapists there, um, it was great because I used to have, uh, I had a column there in the local paper writing about these therapies. So I'd get the therapist who worked at my center to give me a treatment and I'd write about it. And this, the Bowen ses session I had with Jeanette, um, who, who, who was who's a brilliant therapist, um, and she um, was doing the move movements. You said they're like it's like tying little pretend bows on your body, isn't it? There's these little squiggly movements, yeah, so subtle. And what I, and, and I really enjoyed it. It was very relaxing. I didn't have a particular ailment to deal with. It was just an experience of of the um, of the therapy. But I went out that evening. And experienced some very good hospitality. And for the life of me, I could the alcohol wouldn't kick in. And I, I don't know whether it was the Bowen or not, but isn't that bizarre? That, yeah. you know, after, after a healing energetic therapy, yeah. as, much, as, as convivial and hospitable as this night was, it was an a Iranian guy, I remember, in Ashburton, which is quite an interesting combination, isn't it? Mm. Um, it, not, it wasn't touching the sides. It, and I thought, this it must be the, the, the session I had earlier on. So shout out to the Bowen therapists of the world. Yeah. If, you, if you've exhausted other means and, you, and you're still in pain, Bowen is absolutely brilliant and worth, uh, worth exploring, I would say. So, yeah. Yeah, so thank you for that little, uh, nice. uh, little detour from the, from the uh, main part of our conversation this morning. Mm. And we're glad to hear from anyone who's, who's, who's using an, what's called an alternative therapy. And if you're getting good results, why not share mm. it and give a shout out to your, your therapist? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's always good to like we're, we're sharing the love with the musicians this morning. Let's do that with the complimentary therapists as well. So the December edition, yeah. uh, I'm sure you've been having a lot of fun. Have you had the same sort of challenge of uh, having too much material and thinking about expanding it again? We're 112 pages this month. My only challenge was the kind of about six days before it was due out. Um, I'd still got quite a few things to do because we've had a quite a busy month. 
um, and my computer died. You know the button that goes oh. on and off? It's kind yeah. of an important button. Yeah. It's quite an important button, yeah. yeah. Quite an important button. Couldn't do a lot without it. Uh, so big shout out to my friend Kurt um, at the Algol Computer Centre, who literally on a Friday afternoon dropped it off, and by Monday afternoon it was back with me, which was and Was amazing. it the button or was it something more it serious? Was, yeah, he, put, he had to literally take the whole computer and put it in a whole new casing. Um, oh, so I included an ordering one that fitted my computer spec. He built the computer originally about five years ago, so he knew it. Oh, um, but I, literally, that on-off button is <laughs> quite important, <laughs> isn't it? It's like, <laughs> ah, help! You just sit there going, no, please, please yeah, work. Please work, <laughs> please. Down on your knees in the office, like, oh, please, I'll do anything. I need you, I need you right now. I need you right now. So, and yeah, so it came back last Monday and it was a frantic two or three days of uh, catching up, but I did it. It was fine. It went out on time. So. And presumably you you, you uh, found out how reliant you were on the computer in, in such a well, Yeah, I'm really good at, at backing up. So I've always got it um, sort of Dropboxed. Every time I, I play around on anything on the newsletter every month, I Dropbox copy it. Um, and I've got a laptop, but that doesn't have InDesign and you can only use InDesign. And so I'd have to literally, it's kind of difficult. Take it off the computer that I haven't got because it's being mended to put it on the other computer. And I'm like, ah, I got a bit stuck there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, well, I'm glad you were able to put that behind you and you yeah. had excellent help. Um, yeah. th there are... There are a number of these wonderful independent um, technical people, aren't there? You know, yes. it, it, we tend to go to the big shops, don't we, for our purchases of electronic goods. Mm -hmm. And I notice in Portugal there, there's quite the network of smaller places that will sell you reconditioned computers, some yeah. new stuff. They'll change the screen on your phone. Uh, well, my experience of those guys has been fantastic. Whilst yeah, doing Kurt's doing amazing. It. He built, but because both of us, obviously Dave and his photography, he needed a oh, very yeah. particular computer that's got huge amounts of memory and really fast, obviously, for, for processing and, and uploading all the images. Yeah. Um, and I wanted something different. Um, and he literally built to spec. Um, and price-wise, hugely comparable with going online and just, you know, or going to a local shop and buying one. Um, so yeah. I, I, Maybe a hundred more, you know, but for the for the service and the the brush, you yeah, know. absolutely, yeah, amazing. Okay, yeah. so let's add that to the list. Uh, shout out yeah. for the musicians. Shout out for the complimentary. <laughs> therapy, shout out for the independent uh, computer guys um, yeah. uh, and gals around the country who are doing amazing work and helping people. Really? In, in in situations of dire need, it has to be said as well. You know, when your hard drives crashed, I think we had that with Miss, one of Mrs. M's hard drives. Um, and you know, they can recover things. Um, we bought a hard drive that it turned out it wasn't in a box, it wasn't in a casing. You know, it, it was just a hard drive to be put into a stack um, in, it, or a console. And I took it to the guy. I said, "Can you change this for me into one that can sit on the desk?" He said, oh, "I'll just put it in a box for you." And it was done real quick, great value, really good. And that was in Anadia. I can't, sadly, I can't remember the name of the place, but brilliant, brilliant people. And yeah. so thank you for your help with yeah, that. Really. Wonderful um, uh, techno friends of ours. Right, front yeah. cover then. Yeah. Is this a street artist? Or yeah, is oh, this no is. Way? This is the start of Christmas for me. It's next weekend. Um, it's the Living Statues. Um, it's a national company, but they come to Lagoa in the Algarve um, for a Friday evening and a Saturday morning just mm. before Christmas, and they do three hours each set of living statues. They are – and the, look at the costumes. I mean, they're incredible. And they – some of them act and react a little bit to the audience, or they – we had one guy one year that literally was balanced in midair on a bike cycling. So some of them have some movement, and others yeah. stand perfectly still. They well, kind of go off and have a little coffee break every hour or so. Who can blame them? But other well, than yeah. that. They're, but they're incredible. Yeah. The costumes oh, and the it's all. If the weather's good, it's always outside in the streets, um, yeah. and it's the start of Christmas for me. I absolutely love it where, each year. Where is that happening, Ali? Lagoa in the Yeah, right. and Main um, Street. Yeah. This is I mean, two things that, that strike me here. The, the is it verdigris? Is that the, the that you know? It's a bronze or copper. It, yeah, no, yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? I, how they do it, their costumes, I have no idea. They they are mm. works of art, absolutely incredible. And then, of course, a red carnation, uh, which yeah. is the uh, the emblem for the carnation revolution, which is we have the 50th anniversary celebration, the golden anniversary of the carnation revolution. Yeah. So that's really timely and brilliant as we go into that year of celebration. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. So stay with some photography and look at these rather. Oh, no, I knew you'd love these. Aren't they? Isn't it amazing? It's yeah. we found out the history. We had no. There's there's a two or three within reasonable driving distance. There's one near Algesur out to Dodo Station, 
This one's out above Monchique on the old Monchique to Lisbon Road. And you um, actually found out the story. We found out the story. Well, Dave posted it up, and then a couple of Portuguese friends popped straight up and went, "Oh, it's this." If okay, so the thing you need to look for is above the main uh, archway normally on any of these buildings will be the letters J A E, Juliet oh, Alfredo. Okay, okay? Yeah. Um, and they literally um, they were built by the um, the government, and they were used by road workers who were building the new roads. Um, so yeah. you're going back into history quite a long while, and they're part of the road authority's portfolio, um, the Estradas de Portugal. Um, but they literally, um, I put a link in the website on the and on the newsletter. There's yeah. there, a lot of them, have, as like this one, have fallen into complete disrepair now, because obviously the road workers lived in them when they were building the roads. Um, people would use and stop them as kind of like highway kind of points as well to stay for the night. Um, but most of them now have fallen into disrepair. Um, they're all mainly, literally, obviously, beside the road. Um, yeah. But the, they've put about 50 of them up for sale on their website. Um, well, isn't that amazing? Because a number of things, again, here strike me, uh, looking at the, I mean, beautiful f photographs are one thing. Very, very, very moody and magnificent. Mm. Uh, great work from Dave here. Yeah. And we've all been there, haven't we? Like, we need to buy that and do it up kind of vibes. <laughs> I mean, you kind of you kind of do um not tire of it but the, your zeal for that sort of thing lessens as the longer you live in the country right and, and, and the older you get mate i'll tell you and, and yes age age <laughs> <laughs> that's so true um, age change, changes your enthusiasm yeah. for buying a doer upper as well but there are so many dilapidated properties aren't yeah. there that are so charming in this way of course yeah well. Beautiful. But then to find out that you can actually buy some of these now because, it, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's like a, a dream, isn't it, of like, you know, standing, looking at it and someone walks up to you and says, it's for sale, you know, if you ring this number, it's like, and then the story begins. But here, this is the site where some of these are available now. They're being gathered together and sold off uh, yeah. on a particular website, the link of which is there. So that's fantastic um, good, Ali, yeah. for that. Yeah, for anyone who, who, who fancies one of these very, I mean, they, each one will be, unique won't it of course because of its location but i imagine the styling will change from place to mm -hmm. place similarities but you'll end up with your own very special roadside but then be, i Dormitory. love the fact they could have just built a block you know like a really of boring course. stick some beds in there bunk beds that'll do for the workers but they yeah. haven't if you look, look at the cornicing and the detailing on there yeah. it's incredible beautiful roofs if yeah. you go on i've got the link dave sheldrake photography on his facebook page uh -huh. um, you'll see the actual article where he put one of these pictures up. And underneath, uh, one of our Portuguese friends actually put a post uh, with a picture up of a, a finished, renovated one near Al Jazeera. Um, And it's incredible that the difference between before and after, if you like, was amazing. Um, beautiful. So okay. that's worth a look we at. May, we may return to that because um, yeah. we've got a lot to get through in the magazine. But that sounds really fantastic, a little uh, journey we could go on this morning as well. So that's yeah. beautiful. Um, straight into the magazine and seeing these beautiful images. Uh, let's yeah. go to pages four and five and more beautiful. I mean, we're just being Lovely. bathed in the glory of the uh, a sunrise, I'm thinking. Oh, don't be silly. This is Dave we're talking about. He doesn't okay. get up early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll know that. I'll know that from now on. I, I don't know. The top right hand corner has a feel of a. I know what it is. It's because it's so uh, tranquil and yeah. um, empty of people, right? That's why I'm thinking it's a, it's a sunrise. It's so okay. Are you ready for the two interesting facts? Because I always check with Dave now. I always say, which beach is it Carl's going to ask me? And I yeah. never know which was which. So it's Amado Beach, A M A D O. Okay. But yeah. the bit you're not going to believe, he took all four of those photos on the same afternoon. That's well, the that, same is, day. that is it's hard. I don't doubt day. you for one moment, but I would never have guessed that. No. Uh, that's yeah. No, that's how quickly at the moment our weather's changing. Yes. Um, you know, it, literally the four seasons in one day is incredible. I love bottom right. Look at that glow coming up through the cliffs. And people standing there, that was really not whoever they are. Thank you very much. You made yes. the picture. I, I also like that picture because it's, yeah. you know, you, this, this is really good photographic storytelling. Is What yeah. are they looking at? I can see it's glowing. Mm. 
And I can see the backs of them looking into that uh, valley on the other side. Well, what are they looking at? I know, uh, it's beautiful. We may never know. We may never know. It, you know, it could be an alien craft, couldn't it, that's landed <laughs> there. Um, but uh, it, we will never know. And that's such a fabulous uh, photograph. Yeah, it's gorgeous, cool. isn't it? Lovely. But yeah, all yeah. the same afternoon shoot, amazingly. Nice, nice work, Dave. And yeah. as you said, uh, Dave Sheldrake, dot photography. Um, is Dave website, Dave. yeah. If you look on Facebook, I think he's just Dave Sheldrake Photography for the for the Facebook. I'll try and find okay. you the link if you like. Yeah, that would yeah. be wonderful. Okay, Bob's in, this, and we've got a few comments to come back to uh, in just a moment. Bondi, speaking of computers, Vitor Costa, Senior and Kiko, and our own Vitor Costa's father our bro and brother are excellent with computers. Great help in Barcelos. So there you go, another recommendation if you're looking for a local person uh, on the um, IT hardware and software front. And uh, look no further than the costas up that way. Um, roughly how much a property? Did you look at the prices of these um, roadside uh, buildings? I didn't get into it as far as looking at prices, partly because Dave was getting quite excited. And I'm like, no, we're nope. not buying. No, no, them. no, no, no. <laughs> Okay. Well, I put the link in there, um, Deagle. Have a look at that, mate. And um, Or did I? Um, I'll make sure it's in there. It is the uh, Patrimonio. Um, so I'll make sure you've got the link for that and you can do a little bit of research yourself and um, you can suggest to the Minister of Home Affairs maybe that you found a new house yeah. for you both in Ooh. Portugal. Excellent. I've just, okay. I've just sent you the link, Carl. You should have got it through in our chat. There's a Facebook photo link. I think if you click on that, that should come straight through to the actual photo of the oh, finished property. Great Please. stuff. Okay, we'll return to that if we if we have have a chance because we do get chatting here, don't we? And time runs we out. Do. We got to make sure. I got to make sure that we get the dad jokes in as well this morning. Um, <laughs> your work, of course, as well. What, what's going on with your with with? with oh, lo loving this one. Uh, bottom right. Uh, bo bottom yeah. central there, and that's um. Oh, triptych. Is it? Is that what it's called? Yeah, triptych. Yeah, um, Logish. It's an older one. I, I should, the one on the left is the latest painting, which was for a client. Yeah. Um, so you can see the photograph of the back of their house that I painted from. There you go. Uh, yep. So yep. they wanted it in my style. So that was great fun because they had lots of exciting things under that covered area for me to paint. So I really enjoyed it. It was good fun. And I just shared a couple of other then recent sort of, or, you know, um, older commissions that I've done in the same kind of style because some people like my new wave style with their house I think it works really well so is that what you how you what you name it the new wave style yes of course yeah I call it new wave I, I didn't have a name for it initially I just thought well it's new and there's lots of waves so new yeah, wave seems to fit and it's stuck so but it, and uh, with your work here for the clients um that to me is iconic Algarvian living the yes. at, indoor outdoor space that is what's possible isn't it in the algarve for yeah. a lot of the year to be on yeah. that to be on the dining table not on it around the dining table on that little sofa there maybe out in the sun if it's not too intense yeah and that that to me that symbolizes algarvian life uh, beautifully in your work absolutely there. well dave went and photographed it for me so i could work from it but literally in front if you like of of the view you can see is their swimming pool but we yeah. decided not to try and put that one in as well and just focus on the house but yeah uh, super yeah very little cool good. spots there in the sun or the shade depending on the time of day it's lovely isn't it and as a lovely christmas gift your work is available isn't it uh, as well yeah of course. yeah yeah okay very good all right um and um an, an advertisement here the cheeky elf in the picture there for the viva no natal what is what is that Estuvuash. statue it's the living statues that's it's their, the one you mentioned uh, before of course isn't yeah, it? Living statues of Christmas. Statuous, that's their the company name so you, they've actually got a yeah. facebook page oh, as that's well Lagoa Natal. That, so that's the kind of festive thing they put on at Lagoa, is it that that month? yeah i mean the, the little elf that you see there i mean the first year we went they actually had about three um quite i think they were sort of late teens um youngsters dressed up as like elves sat in the trees and you didn't. Oh, you literally really? suddenly looked up at these trees that were all magically lit up, and then suddenly see a little elf peeping down at you. Oh, <laughs> brilliant! Excellent. Really, really. Uh, they're very interactive. They're wonderful. It's, uh, I remember as well. Now I was trying to think of the names of some folks I know up in Central. Uh, Lena and Doug Selway do this, don't they? They are. That's two of them. Uh, yeah, that's two of the people of the team. We've got to know quite a few of them, and I have to say, our old dog Cat absolutely adored it we take her along the guy on this bike one year we got to know him really well because she literally 
<laughs> she's a dog. She sits in front of this statue in total adoration and amazement, just staring up at it. For we drag her away in the end, and then she wanted to run back and sit in front of him again. So we we got to know them very well because they thought we were hilariously funny. That there's the bloke with the camera and the dog that loves us, and she did. She absolutely adored those statues. Every year we take her. Uh, yeah, uh, that's great. Yeah. That's a lovely memory. And I'm yeah. thinking immediately, could I take Jimmy Chu along? Um, and my problem, I think, if I took Jimmy Chu along, is he would embarrass me by cocking his leg. <laughs> <laughs> it's the sort of thing he would do, for sure. Um, you know, he'd be very excited, all those people around. He'd get, he'd get a bit giddy, and then he'd lift his leg, and one of the living statues would not be happy about that. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what they would do. I mean, would they just stay in character? I guess they'd have to, wouldn't they? Would, there was they? a guy. I'm just giggling because last year I could picture the one that Jimmy Shoe would have gone up to because there was a guy. I don't know how he did it. Imagine a box about two foot high off the ground, square like a Christmas box, and he was sat in it, literally just his head above the box. Oh. Tucked completely in this box. Just he would have been moving. very vulnerable if Jimmy Choo turned up. Jimmy Choo would have loved that one, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely giving his face a lick, if not the full um, sprinkle. Oh, no. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. Um, and uh, we have a magical Christmas book fair. You're, you're part of the team mm. uh, at this event here. Yeah. Uh, sponsored by the Peshtana Golf Resorts uh, here. And this is Wednesday yeah. the 30th. So not far away from this. Join us at the wonderful yep. Peshtana a Val de Pinta Clubhouse. Is that a nice course? It sounds good. I'm not a golfer, so apparently, yes, it's a really good yeah. course. I have no idea, yeah. mate. <laughs> oh, right. And uh, it'll be a talk with the authors here and a glass of bubbly and some snacks as well. So what are you, you going to be saying to people? Or, or, or do you not want to give the game away? No, we, we've we've planned it all out. Me and Lena have been doing all the planning and we've given it everyone eight minutes, literally tight <laughs> whatever do you imagine <laughs> any is any author going to stick to eight minutes i'm thinking that we're, we're, yeah we've yeah we're going to be timed and we're going to be out one minute cut off really? and everything just to keep well, well otherwise it? it'll just yeah there's seven of us that's a long while to get people to sit well it is time. isn't it it is yeah but i think I'll... you can do eight minutes if you know what you're doing you can certainly uh give enough to get people interested for sure um, but we're all different it's going to be really good because literally all of us have written different books We've all got different backgrounds and interests, so it's the, hopefully something for everyone. It's uh, it's our first time, first time we've set up something like this. We the, the quick story is, you know, when you get that message from finances to say that we're pulling your account, we're interested in you, and you sit there going, no, please, please don't. I haven't done anything wrong. I put my tax return in. I pay my bill. Um, I haven't had one of those. No, tell us more about that. Well, actually, it was quite weird because I really panicked to start with. I'm like, oh, I haven't done anything. I've got an accountant. She does all our finances. We, we're yeah. legal. We do everything, you know, as, as best we can. Mm -hmm. um, and they pulled it in. They weren't happy with the way I was um, declaring my earnings as an author. Okay. Now, they pulled me last year. They were really good. And I was really panicking. But if take heart because if you get that kind of message, they're actually really helpful and they're not trying to because i was thinking oh god they're gonna they're gonna find some i haven't done anything wrong but they're gonna find something yeah surely yeah. they're looking for something wrong and they're not um the guy contacted us a year ago as head of finances locally and said you're using the wrong code as an artist and an author we have a special code for creatives if anybody else is a creative in, in the whole Portugal, you yeah, might not sure. know this there's a spec when you you register the codes that you do your work under yeah, if I can okay. keep it simple. There's yep. a special code if you're a creative person, and it covers teachers and others as well. Um, you don't have to be VAT registered. So if you're up towards the point where the VAT threshold will kick in, which is only top of my head about 12,500, it's really mm. low, um, you then have to register and pay VAT. But if you've got this creative code, you are exempt from VAT. You don't have that to is, worry about that, it. So isn't that great? that's worth knowing. It is, isn't it? And for some people, it is going to be a hobby and it might not go above that. And they can breathe a sigh of relief because they're doing the right thing and they're not um, not having to keep... But for uh, those of us that are well above it, you're like, ouch, I don't really want to have to stop adding VA because to my paintings, yeah, I'd be adding 23% right. to the, to the oh, total. Anyway, so it's they true. did that. Then they came back this year and said, mm -hmm, we've got that code, but we're not sure you're putting... I won't bore everyone with what they came out, but they literally sat down with myself and the accountant. We did it all through on email. 
and said, you need to do it like this. We, we, they didn't know. They went nationally to find the answer because they went, we don't have many authors that are above the VAT threshold, but we'll find mm. out what you do. But basically, they said, actually, you, you need to put it through this way, not the way you've been doing. Don't worry about no, it. Uh, we'll help you. This is how you do it. Um, and the, there are, it's plus and minus. It probably slightly not in my favour in terms of um, tax wise, but I'm doing it legally and properly now. Very good. The More whole point of the authors, I contacted a few and went, oh, did nobody, nobody had a clue. They didn't. They couldn't. They couldn't. So no. I said, well, we'll have a lunch. And when I know the answer from finances and my accountant, we'll get together for lunch and I'll explain. What that is great. That is good was. to know. And it might encourage people as well to become I authors think, and do that. I think so. It's been really good. So out of that lunch came, why don't we all have a book fair before Christmas? And then one of the guys said, well, I'm Pishtana. I live there. And they've already said they'd be interested because I asked them this morning. And suddenly at the end of the lunch, we've sorted out our finances and we've got a book fair planned. Well, um, you know you're on the right track when a plan comes together yeah. like that. And what Absolutely. a great idea. You can go yeah. along, you can get a glass of bubbly, you can have some snacks, you yeah. can hear the presentations of the authors, and it's a Christmas present buying opportunity as well. There's got to be one or two authors in there whose books you can buy, support local authors, and find yeah. a nice uh, yeah. individual. Yeah. Sign, sign copies as well, so you can we'll personalise them if it's a Christmas present for someone. How about do that? that? <laughs> yeah, what a great yeah. opportunity to write something witty as well by the author <laughs> or the recipient. Excellent stuff. Okay, Absolutely. that's wonderful. Oh, and the date for that will be the uh, next, next Wednesday. Wednesday. 13, 13. Three o'clock. Three till five. Eight minutes each, everybody. Okay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Back to computers now. What's happening here? Oh, this was brilliant. What I've tried to do this month um, is share a few charities um, that if people, because we, Dave and I always do it, we don't buy big Christmas presents for each other. We donate to a charity. We've done it for years. It's just mm -hmm. the thing we do. I know lots of people do it. Um, I've tried to select a few smaller charities. You know the ones where fifty euros would make a real difference. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you know that that kind of a level of charity. Now these guys, do you remember the art fair that I did in September? Mm. Um, a load of kids came round on the, the Friday evening, and I had sweets and and gifts and things. So I was giving out some free little key rings and got chatting to all these kids, and they were so lovely. The whole group of them were about eight of them. Started chatting. They were asking about my paintings. And they were just a really nice bunch of kids and then an adult came over said oh thanks so much they're they're having such a lovely time we're a charity and we do like an after school club and we thought we'd bring them today and just let them meet the artists um so i chatted to the person that was with them and got an email um then got back in touch with them i said i'd love to feature you in snapshot so this is the result it's a big interview with the the guy that set up the charity it's called the lighthouse project um it's a non-profit in Portimao um, and they work with disadvantaged low-income families. They do after-school clubs, they do coaching um, lessons with them, they take them out on trips, um, oh, but they really work with the most needy, if you like, in, in the area. Um, all nationalities, not, not just Portuguese, but obviously mostly Portuguese children. Um, and anyone and looking to, to, to follow in your footsteps there and do the same sort of thing, you can put them in touch. Beacon of Light is, is the name of the project. It's called the Lighthouse. The Lighthouse. Project. Project. Yeah, well, but we've got Beacon of Light, yeah. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, so if you, obviously if you pick up this month's newsletter, you can get all the details and their links and how to find out more about them. But we just it's one of the charities I just wanted to shine a light on this month and go, these guys are doing an amazingly good thing, very quietly. Yeah. They're just yeah. getting on with it. And they're helping yep. a lot of youngsters. Really good. And as you say, a little bit of a donation can go a long way uh, in a charity of that size. Fantastic. Excellent stuff, Absolutely. Ali. Um, fun on the beach. And uh, <laughs> there here she is. Lara here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and canine professional services. Is, is, is that dog walking as well? A little advert there for Rodolfo? No, Rodolfo, we've been going. We called him out um, as a one-to-one -one, um, session. He's a dog trainer. Oh, um, but he's a really lovely guy as well. He's fantastic with dogs. I mean, he, he just he has that natural way. He he does training the way I wanted to do it with Zara, which is positive reinforcement, lots mm -hmm. of treats, lots of praise, um, not saying no um, to them. Um, but we've started now. He does um, classes every week where you can go along. It's by donation, so there's you know there's no fee for it if you haven't got much money. 
Um, but we basically get together as a group of dogs that are all trouble. <laughs> so yes, we did it yesterday. A lot of barking yesterday, but they all calmed down. And um, we did training together. Then we let them have a run and a play together. And for Zara, yeah. it's amazing because she's never been socialised. So teaching her literally how to be around other dogs and other new people is has been amazing. And she's really coming on well with it. She's doing great. So it's just another shout out for a little small charity. For yeah. his little classes. He's just started classes at Lule. So he does Marmalette, which is near um, Monchique and Lule in the Algarve. Um, really he, nice guy. Yeah. Vito Costa, we've mentioned him and his family already this morning up in the north. And he's our, he is... Um, uh, you know, our man in the north, um, or one of them, as, uh, as yeah. it turns out, and certainly around Pontelima Barcelos. And he, he he's a bit of a dog trainer communicator. Does Rodolfo appear to have another level of communication with dogs that you and I might not have? Is that how, how he operates? Teaching me, he has a, a very calming presence that's actually, you can see the dog's center themselves when he talks to them yes. it's not it's not there's no force and quite quite the opposite actually the, and he's trying to teach me because my voice you can hear me chat 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 i chat to the dog and i you know i'll give her the same command three times just to make sure she's heard it he's like, no 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 just once very strong just calmly but you're in control you give her the command you look away let her work it out and the the biggest thing he taught me is i was training her and teaching her well and i've had lots of treats she's she's very food oriented which is helpful but i'd give her a treat the minute she did something right and he went no stop and watching and i can yeah. see what i'm doing wrong he said the treat isn't the prize the prize is the connection back with you when she clicks that she's done the right thing and when she looks back up in your eyes and you've got her and you can see and there is a moment where a dog you could see their face got it got it Yes, yes. Then you give the treat. And then it's not about the treat, it's about the connection that you've got with your dog. And I, nobody, you know, he was worth, you know, the one off fee for a one to one session just for that yes. moment because That's I got amazing. it and she got it. And I could see the moment where Zara clicked and looked at me and went, Oh, I did it, Mom. Yeah. And it was wonderful. And yeah. then you give the treat. And instantly it transformed all of the training I'm doing with her. And now, every time I want her to do something, she sits and looks up at me and she's yeah. waiting for me. And that's where Rodolfo is amazing. He has a presence. Even naughty dogs, he'll just take the naughty dog from you, whoever the owner is, and you'll sit it down. And within a minute, that dog's sitting, eating treats, coming when it calls, waiting, everything. And, and that's like, what I mean. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <That's laughs> incredible. Yeah. And it's not yeah. generally to do with what we imagine it to be to do with, is it? We, a lot of us muggles in the dog training world, yeah. we're, doing, we're doing what we think is right. And it's just so not the right thing. And it takes that kind of level of um, Jedi dog management, I think. Yeah, Brilliant. Little, he says, a couple of seconds, give the dog time to work it out. Don't yeah. keep giving the command. Give the command and wait. Yes. You Very can good. suddenly see the dog go, got it. Very so, good. Yeah. If you want a dog uh, and you haven't got one and you've got um, the right circumstances to get a dog, you, you always have a feature, don't you, for, for teaming up dogs with, with new owners here. Absolutely, and, uh, yeah. 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 But this one's two more charity things for you. Uh, yeah. Still dog related, you know me. Buddy's Legacy, another little small tiny charity in the Algolf, but I really like what they're doing. Say you're a very poor family and your dog becomes ill and you can't afford to take it to the vet. You can't even afford sometimes the vaccinations it needs um, or it suddenly gets run over and you're hit with a bill because you haven't got in, you know, I always insure my dog, but not everyone can afford to do that. Yeah. Um, these poor low income families, quite often that's when the dog's thrown away. It's thrown over the canals wall or it's just abandoned. Yeah. Um, and what this charity is doing, because she had a rescue dog herself and Buddy was the name of her dog. So it's in... Um, buddy's memory she literally brings together the people that need help you know my dog's been run over i'm at the vet's help what do i do with people who are willing to donate small amounts to help fund that treatment for that dog so it's a very personalized service um she knows the people the dog that we're treating and the people that are donating and it was, i just thought what a lovely idea to keep yeah, that dog with the family rather than them have to lose them so very really good, good. Yeah, yeah that makes sense on so yeah, many levels i like that one it's the only one i know and then the yeah. other one i got to tell you this one's brilliant Neem was a little nine well she was eight and she was fundraising for her local animal rescue in bristol in the uk contacted oh me initially and said 
would I give a copy of Cat the Dog sign copy as one of the um, prizes for the raffle? Yeah, of course I will. She got did that. She got, she got in touch with you and asked you. Yeah, she's eight. Yeah, she's eight. She, what she's a working with her grand. She's amazing. Anyway, it gets better. She Then we got chatting. I got to know her. And she raised, oh, I don't know. 50, you can see on the poster. I can't quite see the amount from here. Um, how much was it? 1,726 was... British pounds. That's the one. Thank you very much. Um, that was her raffle. That's how much she raised for the charity. And then we got chatting. She said, oh, you've written a book. I'd like to write a book. She said, aged eight. As I said, well, go for it then. She, will you help me? Of course oh, I will. Great girl. So she's literally written a book about her fundraising journey and all the people that have helped her and the way she raised money and the charities that she helped. Um, Cat the dog's in there. Um, we, we were delighted to help her with it. So she's now nine. And I literally on Facebook yesterday, she posted up a video of opening the box of her printed books that have just arrived at home for her to, to sell. Well, oh, obviously all for charity as well. Person. Yeah, uh, she's nine years old. Big shout out to Neem, bless her, who's literally well done. amazing, isn't it? Good From girl. Schools. Brilliant. My fundraising really journey there. Charities and generosity are great partners is the yeah. subtitle of that book. Great Wonderful. stuff. Uh, well done. Uh, brilliant. Quite rightly so. Uh, featured in the latest yeah. Snapshot uh, magazine that we're featuring. Uh, we're looking at the, a preview today uh, of Snapshot, the December edition. And there's a dog you can give a home to who is Marley. She's pretty. She's gorgeous, isn't she? Yeah. I, it's a boy. And I almost, oh, almost, boy, right? we were okay. half tempted, but he'll... <laughs> He'll be 11 coming up. So he's, and I think of a five year old bouncing Zara and an 11 year old Marley. I'm not sure they'll go very well together. Yeah. But he's, look at that face. Isn't he beautiful? I was thinking Marley, yeah, um, uh, with an eye either. I thought it was a female dog, but Marley yeah, no, the boy, no. Marley the boy there with an eye. He, he, he was at first at the shelter um, almost two years ago, found a home, but the owners were very elderly and unfortunately they've gone into care. So they've, had to give him back to the charity oh, um, right. but what a sweet looking face that boy is it I is that is a definitely him. pick me face isn't it for yeah. sure well, good Gorgeous. luck marley good luck marley yeah. and, a, and a, a, a calm dog by the sound of it a, a, a yeah beautiful dog. yeah lovely but it, it would suit any family or any older person no problem at all it's okay beautiful. All right, and what's Ivan got for us uh, this this month? Oh well, this one's a bit weird. It's it's believed to have come from the. It's called Heavenly Bacon to Senio. Uh, I always struggle. <laughs> Seu, Seu. I can never pronounce Sky properly. Sky and Heaven oh, are the yeah. same one, aren't they? Seu. Yes, that's what. Yeah. And isn't that a lovely thing? I I yeah. really like that Sky and Heaven are the same thing. Yes. Yeah. It's uh, so it's a cake. It uses ground. The original was bacon fat. Apparently, um, now it uses almonds. Quite a few people here. Yes, <laughs> but it, apparently it's it's uh, quite often a Christmas season special. So I'm really? gonna, yeah, it's. Uh... So have you talked to anyone who's tasted it? No. So if someone on is listening, can you tell me what I it's just, like? Because I, I can't eat it. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought so, and I'm just wondering mm. how bacony it is. A nice little sprig of hortella on the top there, I think, as well, and some ground. I, I think they use almonds instead of bacon now, so it's probably all right. It's probably not quite as uh, bacony as it used to be, but uh, <laughs> it does look nice, though, doesn't it? Bacony is a good adjective. It does look very nice. I would eat that uh, straight <laughs> after the show this morning. <laughs> Cats questions, right? Yeah, another beauty there. Who's this? Tinker. Another rescued dog, Tinker. Yes, he was beautiful, beautiful. He's got a right. Portuguese look about him, hasn't he? Yeah, he's not. He's in the UK, um, but there's oh, a really nice guy. You see all his social media. He basically he's another charity in another UK one. Um, set up what's called the Stray Army, and he fundraises for stray rescue animals as well. Oh, um, okay. but, uh, so yeah, really funny interview. It was very very good. He's uh, seems like what's your favourite food? I love hard boiled eggs. <laughs> And roast chicken. I love dog. I love it when we do these questions and the dogs come back with some amazing, amazing answers. Yeah. Uh, so there yeah. you go. Stray Army uh, right yeah. there. Holiday season in Portugal. And yeah. uh, this is good. Bit, a bit of vocabulary building here, right? The um, yeah. You've got one of the biggest precipios down there in the country, I believe. The VRSA. We have VRSA. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it? It's is it? enormous. I like... My literal local cafe, if you're in El Jazeera, go and see Paolo. Um, it's, the coffee, it's the coffee shop to the left of the market. Yeah. And every Christmas, he, half of the covered area gets taken over with his presepio. And it is amazing because he literally creates El Jazeera. He's got the castle. He's got the church. He's got the oh, river. Really. 
he even he's got tiny little chicken animals and he puts milio little bits of sweet corn in a little bowl for the imaginary chickens to eat i mean it's incredible it's literally it's got running water it's like a mini version of vrsa and it's literally just paolo in his cafe it's it's very incredible. good anyway, okay has um, a good one as well all right. Thank you for that. That's the nativity scenes of Prosepio. Some vocab here on page 20 and 21 of Snapshot this month. And isn't yeah. that poetic? The Midnight Mass, of course, is the yeah. Amisa do Gallo. The, yeah. When you might hear the rooster at midnight. Um, the, the rooster's a bit keen uh, at midnight, but uh, it's, it, it conjures up a picture of a different time of day for the Mass That's there. Um, Pen is a good name for an author, is it not? It's an amazing issue. I'm, I'm actually quite thrilled we got Joanna to Joe to do a, an interview. She's a really famous, excellent indie author. And she does amazing podcasts uh, and emails as well. But she's, yeah, she's pretty famous. I was well chuffed to get her on board. Um, and she did a really interesting interview. It's fascinating to find out how people write and why um, and how they, you know, they promote things. It's really good. She's written Very some good. really right. good books. Yeah, Don't really good. forget, folks, this is my preview version. Yes, so it is. <laughs> you, want to be buying, you want to be getting downloading, not I'm not buying it, you can get, get it free, it's great. Um, yeah. but you want, you want to be downloading the full-length version. We're simply doing a preview here every month uh, that yeah. uh, uh, Ali very kindly puts together. And if you're a fan of uh, thrillers, dark fantasy, crime, and travel, Joanna is your woman there. And you've got um, some memoirs here, including Sarah Beanie. She's perhaps the most famous of these yeah. authors, right? I really enjoyed hers, actually. I wasn't sure what to expect, but I've always liked her TV programs. Um, yeah. She's been battling cancer, um, so that came in at the end oh. of the book. But most of it is just about from the age of 19, she bought her first property to renovate. So she'd have bought one of those ones we said at she the beginning, wouldn't would. she? So yeah. Sure, she'd love those. But... Yeah. I see it all um, links together. <laughs> Slowly. Sarah Beanie, is she the one who is with the Phil or is that no, that's a different lady, isn't it? And the property. Different, yeah. Sarah, yeah, she did um she's done more country and property renovation ones oh. than yeah. Oh. But so, yeah, see. like um, uh, uh, something in the country. I can't remember the name. Oh, I've right. British TV for so many years, I can't remember the names of the programs. Same here. It's uh, pretty famous. I Julie That's Topman it. and uh, James, uh, Tony James Slater Slate. with Alligators Eat Marshmallows as well. We've run out of time here, uh, yeah, but there yeah. you go. Look, you've got some, some previous covers, always brilliant photography from yeah. um, from Dave here. And thank you, Ali, so much for coming up to 10 o'clock this morning. Um, anything else you'd like to share with us uh, in, in this uh, preview slot that we I'm so delighted to do with you every month. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank oh, you for all everything. It. Thank you for all the, you know, this year's um, yeah. no, you're uh, welcome. appearances. And it will be our last of this year. Your hopes for 2024? Um, I'm hoping to start writing fiction. I've literally, my, my birthday, it was my birthday last month. So I've set myself up in my art studio with my own writing space with laptop and a different monitor and new keyboard and everything. So, because I can't sit in here in this office, but you can see the computer behind these staves. And um, it's a quite, a, we chatter a lot, but that's not, quite the environment i need for writing a book so i've set myself up in my art studio Have so you? i can take okay. it all right now in the same place so very I'm nice a real, a real um priority yeah. for the creativity then an honoring of the creativity Fantastic. absolutely yeah Brilliant. All right. Last few comments then, because um, we got busy chatting and to turn our back on the chat for a moment. I had me some Beryl last evening with some Scotch eggs. Stop it, John. That sounds fantastic. Um, we have uh, the documentary evidence as well. So the long shot of the menu in uh, Letra Brewery in Pondalima. And you, oh no, there, there's the long shot. And as we zoom in, you'll see Owen Scotch eggs are from our very own Gumper community. Owen, he's a co host on the show as well. And his, his eggs are there on the mm. uh, menu now, which is fantastic. Good work Brilliant. there, John. Thank you. And I know it, of course. Um, and the last few comments. Aguadent. That's what you should have for constipado and obstinado. Um, <laughs> obstinado, I mean, cures what you have and gives you what you ain't. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry for the stream of consciousness. Somebody mentioned Ben Al a minute ago. That's absolutely fine. No problem, John. Always happy to mention Ben Al. Uh, the mind can be, yeah, and and usually is a powerful healer. Yeah, a lot of the therapies, I suppose, are the jump start for the mind magic. Um, I've been fast tracked for a second total knee replacement, summer of twenty four. Mm. Routinely fell fast four to five years. Lots of people struggling in pain. I'm sure alternative uh, alternative mm. treatment would benefit. I uh, got first knee, age fifty. Oh. Is it all that sport? Um, so both by 55, pretty young, but damn sore. MRI showed up some very bad wear and tear. I imagine that is sport, Deagle, right? I freeze a hot water bottle and use it as a cold compress when my knees are burning sore. 
and the more hygiene than a bag of peas. Yes, that's true. You always wonder, haven't you, when you go to someone's house and they put peas on on the plate, have they used these on a personal injury? Um, <laughs> we I, have a bag in the freezer and we've literally got a tape written on it going, do not eat. <laughs> not <laughs> yeah. Or do not tell guests. Uh, I, always, I just slow up when the knees are sore. Damn weather in Belfast, not good for joint problems. Love the warm weather in Portugal. Always feel amazing after four to five days. Come and have more days like that, please, uh, here. Yeah. Tea duck. Smash that like button. We'll go to the dad jokes of a tea duck in just a moment. Uh, somebody who loves accented vowels. Yeah, that's the Totsinho de Sil. Um, pronounce the E on sale, as we were saying there. And not really much bacon in it to speak of on the bacon cake there. And there's no such thing as a bad dog, but like parents, really, <laughs> just bad odors. <laughs> and some talk. Thank you for that. Um, some some insight there on the accountancy and, and recommending your excellent accountant. Oh, I think will join us one of these days. Yeah. And one of those roadside places, uh, Coach Turner says, if they're on the EN2, it would be great to open a motorbike cafe for those driving the road. Hopefully a little better than that little chef. Mm -hmm. There is a uh, uh, 24 Orish to, uh, near my neck of the woods on the EN2, which is, is fantastic. That Really good cafe. Uh, every imaginable uh, Portuguese dish is in there, as I recall. So good, good shout on that, Coach Turner. Yeah. Dad jokes then uh, before we leave you this morning. For sale, a broken puppets and no strings attached. Ow. <laughs> Ow. Um, the the best things in life are free, plus shipping and handling, of course. Of course. <laughs> and a cowboy uh, one was uh, asked to help round up eighteen cows. He said, "Sure, that's twenty. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Finish God there. So, cheers, <laughs> Ali. Uh, I'd love to thank you, my love. Merry uh, Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you, and we'll see you in the new year. All the very best to you. Have a great time. Take care. Okay. And bye for now. Big round of applause. Ciao, ciao. See you, see you tonight on the webinars and the Dream Team. <laughs>